This video will review some of the triangle congruence properties. As a review of what we've previously done, there are four ways to prove triangles congruent that we know right now. The first is what we refer to as SSS. For SSS congruence, you have three pairs of corresponding sides congruent to another triangle. In a picture, it would look like this. We use the tick marks to denote which sides are congruent. The one tick mark on the left triangle tells me that the one tick mark on the right triangle are congruent sides. We would call those corresponding congruent sides. The two tick mark, the sides marked with two tick marks are also congruent, and the two sides marked with the three tick marks are congruent. The next of the congruence properties is SAS congruence. In SAS congruence, you have two pairs of corresponding congruent sides and one pair of corresponding congruent angles. That pair of angles is in between the two sides. In a picture, it'll look like this. Here we see that we have the one tick mark and the two tick mark. Where those two sides meet, the angle that is congruent has to be there. This means the angle is included between the two sides. The third method of proving congruence is ASA. In ASA congruence, you have two pairs of corresponding congruent angles and one pair of congruent sides. The side is in between the angles. It'll look like this. Here we see we have the angle, which is marked with the one tick mark inside the figure, marked with the two tick marks for the other angle, and in between those two angles is the congruent side. This would be ASA, or angle side angle. The last method is AAS. In AAS, you have two pairs of congruent corresponding angles and one pair of congruent sides. In this case, the S at the end tells me the side is not in between the angles. This is angle, angle, side congruence. The side is not in between. So this time, it'll look like this. In between the angles that are marked with the one tick mark and the two tick marks, the side that is congruent is not there. Instead, it's somewhere else. It's away from one of those congruent angles. This is angle, angle, side. Take a moment and notice where the side is in ASA and AAS congruence. Both of those congruence properties uses two angles and one pair of congruent sides, but it's the position of the side that tells me the difference in the properties. In angle side angle, the side is in between the angles, and in angle angle side, the side is not in between the angles. Now let's look at three examples of how we can prove triangles are congruent. In this problem, it asks us to prove which of the congruence properties, either side side side, side angle side, angle side angle, or the angle angle side is used to prove congruence. If it's congruent, we're going to write a congruent statement saying which triangles are congruent and how we know. If it's a property that does not prove congruence, all we can say is they're not guaranteed congruent. They might be congruent, they might not. We don't know if they are. Okay, to begin, in the first problem, take a look at what we're given. Typically, in a problem like this, I will look at it and try to find what congruence property I see in the picture before I do anything. So spend a moment, look at the four properties above, and see which one this picture appears to be. In the picture, I see that we have two sides tick marked off, and we have one angle marked. This tells me that because the angle is in between where the two sides meet, this is side angle side. This is a valid congruence property. To do the congruent statements, I'm going to start by listing off what parts are congruent. Now, you don't necessarily have to go in the order of the tick marks, but sometimes it helps. Here, I see the one tick mark would be side BE. Side BE is congruent to the side in the other triangle that has one tick mark, in this case, NK. Now, you could also say EB is congruent to KN. The order of the letters in a side doesn't matter. BE is the same as EB. Next, for side angle side congruence, I'm going to say that angles are congruent. Now, because angle B is all by itself, there's no angles adjacent to it, I can just call it angle B. And I can say that angle B is congruent to angle N. Now, you could also use the three letter names. The three letter names are always safe, and if you use that, you can't get it marked wrong. The three letter name for angle B would angle be either angle EBL or LBE. For angle N, you could call it either angle KNI or INK. The third pair of congruent sides, or sorry, the third pair of congruent parts were the last pair of congruent sides. That would be side BL and NI. And I'll mark those also. Now, each of those three things were given to me. Later on, when we're a little bit more formal with the proof, we'll give the reason as given for those three pieces. Next piece is we're going to mark what triangles are congruent. In this problem, they've already started marking out triangle EL, oh, sorry, 
they've already started marking out triangle LEB. I need to match which triangle would be congruent, and i got to get it in the correct corresponding order. From L to E to B has the sides it has no tick mark, then one tick mark. So when I list out the new triangle that does the same thing, I've got to go across the side that has no tick marks to the side that has one tick mark. That would be side I to K to N. Visually, what I'm saying is that if we're saying from L to E to B, that would be the no tick marks through the one tick marks. So we'll do the same thing over here. It's I to K to N. So when we do our congruent statement, we'll say that triangle LEB is congruent to triangle IKN. And again, we got to give the reason. What we said before, this is side angle side. All right, take a look at the next problems, and I'd like for you to pause the video, work the two problems out, and then check your answers. I'll give you a minute to pause it. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work the problems out. Looking at problem two, my first step would be to look at what congruence property is given to me. I'm looking at the problem and I see that we have two pairs of uh, corresponding congruent angles. Angles O and Y and angles N and E. In between those angles I see we have a side that's marked off, side ON and then side EY. This tells me that we're looking at angle side angle. I know it's angle side angle and not angle angle side because the side is in between the angles. Again, what I'm saying, where we see the angles marked off, in between those two is the side that's tick marked. And again, angle E and Y are congruent, and in between is side EY that shows the congruence. So again, we're looking at angle side angle. To do this proof, we'll begin by listing out what parts of triangles are congruent. Here, again, like I said before, angles N and E are congruent, or you could start with O and Y, it doesn't matter. Side NO is congruent to side EY, and then that last pair, angles O and Y. Again, here, because they're all given, it doesn't matter what order you pick, as long as you're actually picking parts that are matched congruent. Triangle NMO goes from the double arc to the angle that has no marks to the angle that has the one mark. So when we do our congruent statement, we've got to go the same order. If we're saying two marks to no mark to one mark, that would be triangle E to K to Y. And again, we said this is because of angle side angle. For problem three, here I see that we have three sets of angles marked. I see that angle O is congruent to angle M, angle T is congruent to angle R, and angle N is congruent to angle A. Now looking above, I see that all four congruence properties have to have a side, at least one side congruent. And here in the picture, we don't have any sides that are marked congruent. So what this tells me is this is not going to be any of those four properties. We would call this one angle, angle, angle. So listing this out, I do want to say what pieces that I have that are marked congruent, in which cases angles O and M, angles T and R, and angles N and A. Those are my three pairs of congruent angles. However, angle, angle, angle is not a congruence property. So I don't know if these triangles are congruent. They may or may not be. So instead, the best I can say is that they're not guaranteed congruent. To be really sure that I'm doing this correct and justifying my answer, I probably should put down that angle, angle, angle does not prove congruence. In fact, it only proves similarity. If the three pairs of angles are congruent, what it tells me is that the triangles have the same shape, but the size may or may not be the same. One triangle could be a magnification of the other. Alright, I hope this video helps and thank you for watching.